What would you say if I tell you that slow wave sleep has the ability to calm the immune system and multiple sclerosis? Slow wave sleep is a critical time to repair and make new myelin. Hey, Steve, I'm going to tell you how you can achieve more. There have been many times where I've talked about how important REM sleep is to repair all the good inner sites, which are the brain cells that make myelin and have been lost in MS. But I rarely talk about deep sleep. Specifically, it's called slow wave sleep. Watch until the end. I've learned some really helpful tips that might work for you. Slow wave sleep, which is also known as delta sleep, as well as non-REM sleep, promotes physical recovery and aspects of learning and memory. But putting all of that aside, it's the stage that has also been shown to support the immune system. But you're asking, I know that sounds backwards. Why would I want to promote the immune system? Shouldn't we be weakening the immune system so it doesn't attack our myelin? But when it comes down to it, I don't know why the immune system has gone crazy in MS, but I think it has more to do with it being overactive, not weak. So it's not healthy in the slightest. The bad players are B and T helper T cells, also known as lymphocytes. Normally, they are tasked with protecting us from outside invaders. But as you know, it doesn't work for us. It's like our friends have turned enemies. Isn't it always the case that something, when it's out of options, it turns to lashing out. There's always the question of, why are, are, what are we doing that are, are leaving these B and T cells the only option to, to, be, to lash out against us? I'm gonna show my hypothesis by pointing to a different condition, obstructive sleep apnea. Slow wave sleep is reduced in it the more severe the apnea becomes. Both diseases are inflammatory. They share the same immune cell imbalance. In this regard, sleep apnea and MS are connected. And I'm sure other autoimmune diseases are as well. As the authors of this paper write, this opens an alternative explanation for the substantial activation of immune cells in obstructive sleep apnea. This is why sleep, slow wave sleep is so important for MS. The immune system needs periods where it just takes a break. I had to master my sleep. I first studied the four stages of sleep. First is awake which is exactly what it sounds like. Nobody's sleep is perfect and not 100%. There are times during the night where we wake up, even if we don't realize it. The second is light sleep. It makes up the majority, where an average of 50 to 60% of the night is spent. The third is REM, as you know, it should make up about 20 to 25 percent of the night and mostly takes place in the second half of the night. If sleep is cut short, most of what is cut is REM, which is a massive problem because it's the stage when new myelin creation happens. Then there is slow wave sleep. It plays a major role in brain restoration. 
It's obvious the pain that affected me at night was caused by multiple sclerosis. And my venous vein ablation in my right leg fixed it. Will ablation work for you? I don't know. It might. I found the figure that 30 million Americans could benefit. So my case is not a rare one. There are three big techniques that I do now. First, I don't fear hot showers anymore. Slow wave sleep is increased when brain temperatures exceed a certain threshold during the day. It could be frustrating in MS. Heat affects us so much. So I used to take cold showers because of this exact reason. But once your recovery starts to kick in, the heat problem will become less and less. Second, I learned a technique that makes me fall asleep within a few minutes. Don't expect to master it right away. It might take you a week, two weeks, maybe a month. Just keep practicing. You want to be able to picture in your mind the following three images. First, try to imagine you are lying in a canoe on a calm lake. Nothing but blue sky above you. Soak that sensation in for a few minutes. When you finally just are wrapped in that image, second, picture yourself snuggled in a hammock in a dark room, just picturing the heavens above you. Again, don't rush away from that image. Hold on to it for as long as possible. And third, as you know, I wear a headband at night. When I sleep, it is wirelessly connected to my cell phone. On it, I have an app called Relaxing Melodies. Alongside the pink noise I, it plays, I've added an isochronic tone that plays a frequency that stimulates the brain. It's also the frequency associated with correct immune functioning, which sounds correct for us. Last, clear your mind. For me, it's the most important step of the three steps and also the hardest. It's hard for me because my mind likes to wander and think about my day-to-day -day activities. So, I try to just picture just nothing. Just focusing on, <sighs> this sounds funny, but I, I, I imagine picturing my nose. Just, just feeling the tip of my nose. At the same time, I think to myself, don't think don't think, don't think, over and over. I can't find any science about how ablation to my right leg affected slow wave sleep, but I think of it as a secondary result. Ablation stopped my pain. And that pain was keeping my brain active enough so it couldn't reach deep enough sleep. But if I'm able to get an hour, hour and a half of slow wave sleep, it really changes my day the following day. <sighs> it's amazing. I wish I had this while I was doing my multiple sclerosis recovery. Finally, I had done my ablation first. My recovery might have happened much quicker. <sighs> Tell me if you have a technique yourself for falling asleep. 
Does it work for you? Are you getting a balanced night? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Until the next one.